Boy, am I doing a terrible job of making videos. Terrible, terrible job of ah! making videos lately. All right, so I'm gonna explain. I've been doing nothing but running truck, uh, running truck and moving hay, that's it. You know, I've been going crazy to try and get it done. I do have a lot of projects that I need to get done, but the main and most important thing at this moment is to get compost home and lime, all right? And I'll explain a little bit more of what my plans are with all that this coming spring. It's not really, uh, not really something I wanna talk about until spring because I'm going down a path I'm going down a path um, that is a path I've been down before but steered away from because like uh, most farmers, here. Yeah, there it is, like most farmers, there's just, we're doing more and more acres, we need to do it faster and faster and the old ways are time consuming. Uh, but the funny thing is, the more you go bigger and the faster and faster you go, the more your input costs are. So, literally, we are. I'm looking at reducing my input costs, changing the crop that I'm growing, and I'm going to grow it at a more efficient, more, more efficient way. Now, I'm going to have to spend some money. Now, I'm going to be spending some money, but I think, and I'm going to explain... Uh, later, I've got a whiteboard that I'm going to, oh, you know, one of those dry erase boards. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you on uh, my whiteboard what it's gonna save me. And by spending a hundred thousand dollars, I'll probably save two hundred thousand. You're probably thinking, "Holy shit, what is that?" Well, there's one thing in agriculture and everywhere in the world that is the most unreliable thing that there is, and that is employees. Employees are unreliable. Um, unless you're married to your employee, she will be the biggest supporter and the biggest, uh, the most reliable person you could ever have. At least I have that with my wife. If I ask her to run something, she is there. Even if she doesn't know how to run it, she will learn and she will do it. And she's really good. Of course, she is my wife and she is also my employee. She does receive a paycheck, which is, you know, a good thing to do. There's a lot of women out there that don't receive a paycheck. They're just there to, to fill in the gaps. Um, and that paycheck is, it's very important to do that. I feel there's a lot of women out there that feel underappreciated by their husbands because they're out there running a planter or whatever. And their name isn't actually on any anything really I mean they go together to take out the loan if you're taking out a loan they go together maybe they go for the seed purchases and they're very big parts of the the uh, process in getting that crop in the ground but when it's all said and done it's Pandy Farm LLC comes across on the check it doesn't say her name so I felt that it was really good and for tax purposes buddy there's more tax benefit to that than you have any idea unless you're doing it already uh, I do not draw a paycheck I I've got my hand in the cookie jar whenever I want it because honestly that's the way I've always worked even though it's an LLC I don't think I'm causing any problems but if I drew a uh, if I drew a salary I would be really annoyed and I would just put it back into the business anyway because that's just the way I am uh, so anyway um, yeah, so you got to spend a little bit of money and employees are unreliable. So you have to equip yourself to cut out employees. Um, as you know, Cody's no longer working for me. And uh, now I'm back to driving truck too much. I got Timothy driving a truck. Um, my wife is doing her part. She's doing paperwork and other things with the other businesses that we have in, you know, out there because we do have more than one business. Uh, so we've got that going on. But what do you do to cut these costs? You need to reduce your, your trips across the field. You need to, uh, 
you need to make your fertilizers work the way they should be working, not the way you would like them to work, and then have constant failures. You need to pay attention to your soil, whether it's healthy, not healthy. You need to make, you know, you just got so many different things that are running around in your head, and you're like, you know what, at the end of this year, I'll be able to retire, you know? That's every farmer's dream, to like, yeah, I'm gonna have a bumper crop and blah, 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 but they do the same thing over and over and over again, never getting a different result. It's kind of psychotic. Um, and it is, that's the definition of psychotic, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Um, I'm always experimenting with something somewhere, and I, I've i always done that, whether it's equipment, whether it's farming, whether it's whatever. I know there's things, and I've, when I was younger, I did them, and I'm like, wow, this really worked. And then it's like, well, that it took a little extra time. I'm not going to do it again. And then the crop just kind of drops off but you know it is what it is you know so you kind of got to do these things and I'm gonna bring you guys along in a limited way just because you know I don't want there's plenty of guys out there that are doing what I'm going to do in a different way than I'm going to do it um, you have to do what you're going to do on your land with your land according to the way your land is set up the way the structure of the soil the structure of the ground the the type of soil the CEC levels of it all that stuff the organic matter if you don't have enough organic matter you better start doing something with organic matter if your pH is low you better do something with that pH you don't do anything with that pH pH is key to making your soil productive it's just if you don't have the right pH, and trust me, I've been dealing with pH issues for years. Um, in the hay business, wasn't really that big of a deal. Didn't really care because, you know, the profit margin in mulch hay is like a razor thin. It used to be pretty wide gap, but now it's razor thin. But, you know, why put calcium or lime down? Uh, to grow a hay crop when you're only gonna lose, you know, like a quarter of a ton to the acre if it's 5, 8 uh, pH versus 6, 8. So, you know, who gives a shit? Um, that way of thinking was probably one of the most expensive, uh, one of the most, not expensive, but one of the most, yeah, costly, I'd say just expensive or costly decisions that I made. I should have been a little more diligent on that, but now I've been woke. I mean, I've woke up to the fact that there are so many different things you can do to your soil to make it more productive, and it's really not that expensive if you know what you're doing. Uh, I'm learning on some of these things that I've forgotten. I'm not learning. I'm learning. I'm not learning these things. I'm being reminded of the ways we did things years ago and how it worked and why it worked. When I was a kid, I didn't know why it worked. I just knew that if we did it, we always seemed to have better crops when we did it that way. And then we moved away from it and it's like, what the hell are we doing wrong here? You know, I used to do 80 bushel beans. I used to do, you know, uh, easily 200 bushel corn with just a small amount of, uh, you know, a blend in nitrogen that was, you know, 100 and 125 to 150 units of nitrogen. We'd be growing 175 bushel corn, but now it takes 250 units of nitrogen to grow 175 bushels of corn. It's in this ground, and now that I know through extensive soil testing and and uh, that stuff, and I won't show you my soil tests because I'm embarrassed by them. Uh, I will show you my soil tests in a couple of years and the crops that I grow on this ground. And uh, it's gonna be expensive, that's all I can say. But anyways, I'm gonna get on to the next thing and you'll see me in a little while. Okay, so what I'm gonna want is the money
change of plans not doing uh, lime I got stuck I and it was kind of dumb I'm on a thing oh. you want to be a part of my video no too bad you are mm. oh wait a minute gonna have a bunch of wine and bitching people because I got dirt on my lens okay so that was the wine and bitching people are done I actually went out and spread two or three loads of lime and then I got stuck on ice ice of all things crossing a ditch so when I went up the ditch the tractor went like a so the spreader was down in the ditch and I stripped all the grass off of the top of the ice because the ice was below it dirt everything and I was stuck so I set my phone someplace and you want to know what the amazing thing is watch this you want to watch this ready oh wait This is the amazing part. Come on, bitch. Call Asawa Co. Calling Asawa Bronzo. It still works. Apple, ladies and gentlemen. I know this was made in China. Come on. I had to hang up. Now, if I use my headset, my ears, to make the call, I can't hang up. It went to her voicemail because this broad doesn't know how to answer a telephone. I was busy doing something. She doesn't know how to answer a telephone. So when my phone looks like a horseshoe, like this, and it's all busted up and you can't like touch anything to make it work, and it gives you like glass shards in your fingers, and your wife doesn't answer the phone, and you know, I'm gonna tell you something, because if you don't answer the phone when she calls you, it's like you're cut off for a week. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, you ain't going nowhere near that ever until you answer the phone regularly for at least a week right <laughs> that's right because that, if you don't that way what are you that's talking it about? yeah mm -hmm. cut I'm off no like idea oh yeah you, you think you're getting some forget it forget it that stuff ain't happening so anyways no it's amazing this apple phone if this was a scam song i don't think it would work you my think? son my son's got a scam song and it's just a scam but it's a scam. It's a scam. But this thing here, I wonder if I could take a picture. But no, it's even cracked open. The camera's got to be junk. But anyways, whatever. I'm going for a new phone. Gonna cost me fifteen hundred freaking dollars, I'm sure. But you realize how much business you do in a day when you don't have your phone. I do math all day long. Do you know that? All freaking day, I'm on that calculator. Did you know that? You didn't know that? Mm. So, it's true. I'm calculating pounds to the acre when I'm putting on fertilizer lime. <coughs> I'm calculating worst case scenarios. I'm on TikTok all the time. I play on TikTok. Yeah. I love this. This dude. So, the turn signals on our tractors all work. If they don't work, we're going to get killed. So, I make sure that they all work. So, I'm coming down Route 519 and right in front of the firehouse, there's a pretty sharp corner. You really can't see around it. And you certainly can't see around me when I'm going down a road. But this brilliant, I mean brilliant individual, this guy was right up there with Albert Einstein, but negative numbers. You know, like if Albert Einstein's IQ was 160, this dude, he was like a 160, but on the other side of the spectrum. So anyways, I got my turn signal on and there's one on the top. There's one that sticks out the side and there's one on the fender. The one on the fender might have been impeded, but the one that sticks out the side and the one on the roof, you could see. This douche canoe tries to pass me on a blind corner, double lines in front of the Kingwood Firehouse on Route 519 as I'm making a left into the field. Now he wasn't close, but he laid on the horn like it was my fault, my fault. Can you believe that? Blind corner, double yellow line, definitely not a passable zone and it's my fault i don't think so so anyways whatever i'm going to get a new phone even though my old one still works i just can't use the calculator anymore okay so i got my new phone now i'm on my way back to work i'll show you that in a second um there's a lot of people out there just in love with samsung but i bought this apple i've had i have an apple computer that i do oh that I do my work from for everything 
and it's just easier when you have everything apple now this is the the god disc driver this one happens to have that fancy pants camera on it um i don't know that it's any better or worse later it's asking me i got all kinds of applications that it wants me to upload but i i just don't have time to play around with that thing So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the Wi-Fi off because it's going to search for everybody and their brother's Wi-Fi notifications. Like, oh my God. So anyways, uh, I'll give you a review in a few days. I'll probably do a live stream on this one. Maybe they'll, uh, uh, on Instagram, maybe they'll enjoy it. I don't know. Let's see what happens. i got no nudes on there like I told my wife. All right. All right. So let's do a live stream. To show you why you should always tarp your lime pile or put it in a commodity building like that eh, if you don't have it full of balers and stuff this shit freezes <laughs> uh, and it's fine i mean i i put fresh stuff on here and then i did dig at it and then of course i i went and i busted it up with the loader um but it freezes and it it's such nice material though uh anyway so that kind of put me out of business it took me twice as long to get this stuff out of there repaired oh yeah we had problems anyway getting in the 6210r i'm going to uh, put this in and when i start this up it's going to throw a code um ready watch this so you start it up let it do its who's a meduz it and then you'll see that yellow light flash in there yeah, and then you're gonna let the green star three thing come up to whatever. That is a touch screen too. Um, yeah, let her rip. Start it up. Now, I'm gonna tell you why it's doing that. Ready? It's loading data. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, every once in a while, you will have a uh, a uh, an issue that you just don't know what the problem is hold on a second that's tomato paste what the hell's calling me anyway i guess it was tim anyways you have a problem you won't know what it is you put you know you go through it keeps throwing the code and you're like well the cat it goes through the calibration process just fine right so 
So why is it still doing that? And you just don't have an answer for the question. Well, I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. It says engine system turbocharger actuator self calibration error active exhaust filter cleaning unavailable continued operation will result in the loss of machine availability and of course the XM radio and the HVAC horse shit and then that's it and then you do that and everything's working fine. Well you see this number right here that 14 volts I'm going to shut her off because there's no need for me to have the thing running. And I'm gonna get out of my tractor. And oh my god, why is that thing doing it? Anyway, uh, the simple answer to that question is, and I looked online, there's a lot of people out there that are like, I've got this code, and every once in a while I'll get another code for something totally different, and then I'll then it'll go away after I've run the tractor for a while and uh can anybody tell me what the problem is well all you get is this pay site where you have to pay to for some guy some some expert to tell you what the problem may or may not be well i'm going to tell you what the problem is so if you're watching this and you don't know what your problem is your problem is you've got a bad battery see these things run on low voltage, these calibrations. So when you turn the key, it goes chee -chee 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 -chee. And if the voltage isn't correct, it'll say that there's a problem with the calibration, which is 100% correct. There's a problem with the calibration because your battery is low. Um, start that tractor up, run it for a little while shut the tractor off start it back up again and lo and behold all your codes that had been thrown are gone and that may even be part of the reason with the hvac um yeah so that's what was happening with mine i put the trickle charger on it and a few uh you know for 10 minutes or whatever go in turn the key code's gone uh, because I brought that that battery from you know what's it gonna be 14 volts or 13 and a half volts or 12 volts but when you turn the key on it and it hits all those solenoids and stuff for your four-wheel drive for your transmission it puts a draw on your battery which drops it below 12 volts could be even 11 volts and then that in turn affects the low voltage in your calibration so if you get those codes it's going to cost you four or five hundred bucks change the battery that'll do it that'll fix your problem uh real simple hope i help if i didn't well go ahead and call up john deere and pay six hundred dollars for him to plug in and tell you hey you need to change your 450 fifty dollar battery <laughs> have a note have a good how does that thing got what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing, Tim? Tim's got a job, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that I haven't filmed much lately and I've been all over the place and I know my videos suck nowadays because I'm just so busy, right, Tim? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take this, it's supposed to snow, so we're gonna use this roof to as a sled, John Deere sled roof, right? I don't think it'll work. I think it would. Nah, it's got too many ridges. If it was smooth on the bottom, it'd be all right. What's in there? What is that? Empty. Yeah. John Deere is going to get a nasty phone call because I ordered springs for that 8120 shifter. Yeah. And this is all they gave me was that one spring. And it ain't the right one. Well, it's the right one, but there's two others. And then the bezel for the headlights. I ordered that, paid for that. It ain't here. But, uh, and that's been weeks ago. It was when we were tearing apart the 6210R. But, uh, well, if it's snowing tomorrow, what we'll do is we'll grease this loader, grease this tractor. I'll get ready for whatever, clean snow, uh, clean up some other stuff, get this table cleared off. There's bits and pieces here that need to be replaced and whatever. I got a whole host of bits and pieces here that need to go back to John Deere because they're just not, not feasible. This will go out to Burkholder equipment. Um, but anyways, Timothy's job is to get the loader brackets off of the 80, the 7410. 
right? You know, if we have to drag that thing in here, that's what we'll have to do. Uh, cause they're going to take that tractor. <coughs> they don't want the loader, which is a pain in my ass because I got to take the, we got to take the loader brackets off all of them and the two spool valves in the back. And then I'm going to have to go in search of a tractor that that'll fit on. So it's a 740 loader. I had to give us an opportunity to do some repair work to it, but I'm thinking they got a 7800 out there. That'd be a good tractor to put that on. It's big enough, mm -hmm. enough horsepower, better than the better than 7410 was, and versatile enough. I just want it so that when we want to go Ray K and everything else, we can do that. But I think my wife is calling. So anyway, see ya. <laughs>